Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing black holes once again. And specifically, we're going to be discussing the collisions between black holes. Because very recently, the scientists from LIGO released this. The visual simulation of some of the most recent detections of black hole collisions that were detected between November 2019 and March 2020. And this represents some of the biggest discoveries in such a short time when it comes to black hole collisions with the total number of collisions being 35, and 33 of these are very likely black holes, with two other objects still being a little bit more mysterious. And so let's discuss the details and specifically focus on some of the mysteries of this particular discovery. Now, as you're probably aware, the first discovery from LIGO was back in 2015, and during its first run in the first year between 2015 and 2016, the scientists back then only discovered three black hole collisions. And obviously back then this was a huge discovery, but today, only 6 years later, we're no longer impressed by this. And so now the only collisions that usually make the papers and usually are talked about are the ones between strange objects, very massive objects, or extremely small objects, or something that the scientists did not expect. But the total number of collisions since the original discovery now stands at 90 with this recent hole essentially representing some of the most successful and most frequent collisions detected to date. Which is of course not to say that the universe is suddenly colliding more black holes last year. No, that's actually not the reason. The reason is that the instruments have gotten so much better and so much more sensitive. While at the same time the techniques the scientists use now, including the statistical analysis, has improved quite a lot in the last few years. With the recent detections from LIGO suggesting that these collisions seem to happen at least 1.7 times per week, or almost twice per week. Although chances are that in some of the future detections, this number might even go up higher as the sensitivity increases even more. And so at this point we've reached a completely new level when it comes to detecting black hole collisions and detecting various gravitational waves across the universe. But more interestingly, a lot of these new detections and a lot of these new discoveries are sort of creating way more questions than answering them. And this is also the case in the recent 35 detections. So for example, in this visual simulation you can see that there are a couple of black holes here that are really 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 massive. But also at least a couple of objects that seem to be extremely small. Now those two objects are probably a combination of a black hole and a neutron star, but at the moment it's not entirely clear. What is clear though is that these unusually large and very massive black holes seem to be a lot more prominent than the original theories predicted. For example, of all of the recent black holes, one of them was 87 masses of the Sun. Now this obviously doesn't compare to some of the massive black holes in, for example, the center of the Milky Way galaxy, which would be at like 4.3 million masses of the Sun, but this particular 87 mass of the Sun black hole poses a serious challenge to modern physics. The problem is that we don't really know how this black hole was created. Normally, when you have a supernova that creates black holes, none of the black holes ever become so massive. As a matter of fact, modern suggestions limit the creation of the black hole at approximately 20 or so masses of the Sun. Some theories go as far as 65 masses, but either way a lot of modern theories don't actually anticipate a black hole more than 65 masses of the Sun to be created in such a way. And that's because if a star reaches a certain mass, it's unable to actually create black holes because of the phenomenon known as pair instability supernova. We've discussed this concept in some of the previous videos, but in a nutshell, a typical star of a very very large mass explodes completely, leaving nothing behind. No black hole, no neutron star, nothing. And today this is referred to as the pair instability supernova, which is why black holes of certain masses, specifically masses of 87 masses of the Sun, are not expected to exist unless they reach this mass by maybe having two smaller black holes collide with one another. But in this new detection, there are two massive black holes in that particular region where we don't expect black holes to exist. One of them is 87 times the mass of the Sun, and the other one is 61 times the mass of the Sun. And their collision created what we refer to as the intermediate mass black hole. The total mass here was about 141 masses of the Sun. And so that's that collision right here. And currently, it's a mystery. It seems to be a little bit too massive to be explained easily. However, there's at least one explanation that's a little bit less counterintuitive that I did mention in one of the previous videos about black hole collisions. The video should be somewhere right there at some point. 
But interestingly, this was not the only such event. There's another one right here that produced a black hole that was about 104 times the mass of the Sun. Once again, a little bit too massive to be explained easily using modern physics. And since two intermediate black holes were found in these 35 detections, that already presents a mystery by itself. Since intermediate mass black holes were extremely rare and were almost impossible to find up until a few years ago, it's really surprising that suddenly we find two of them during just four months of observations. So this already is kind of difficult to explain. But if all of these massive black holes are just the result of other smaller black holes colliding over and over and over and growing in size, the next question here is, well, where exactly are these collisions coming from? How come so many black holes are colliding in this particular region of the universe? So for example, to create this collision right here, you would still need to have at least four smaller black holes. And so that means that a lot of smaller black holes are orbiting around one another in some sort of a region we don't really understand. Now some studies previously suggested that maybe this is just in the middle of a galaxy where the central black hole attracts a lot of smaller black holes. And as they orbit around, maybe they collide with one another. But this is still not really well understood and the gravitational waves coming from this region would probably be slightly different from what we're observing right now. So that's the massive black holes. Then on the other hand, there was another unusual discovery of the black hole in what's known as the lower mass gap. It's a black hole that's basically between two and a half and five masses of the sun, and it's a black hole that, at least in our galaxy, doesn't also seem to exist. Normally, black holes we find here are over five masses of the sun, with anything below 2.5 masses of the sun being a neutron star. It's not entirely clear why this gap exists, but it probably has something to do with just the way that the black holes are created and the way that the neutron stars just cannot be over a certain mass. But a couple of objects here seem to fit this description. They seem to be right in that gap that we've never seen before. And so these types of black holes definitely exist, which means that this requires an explanation for how they form. Theoretically, at least, it's not really known right now. And it's really this event right here that seems to be the most unusual. Notice how the black hole here, and it's a black hole another neutron star, seems to be really, really, really tiny. Its mass is listed at 2.8 masses of the Sun. And that's just beyond the maximum mass of a neutron star, which means that maybe this used to be a neutron star and became a black hole because it absorbed mass from something else. So for example, if a neutron star absorbs a lot of mass from its partner, it will eventually reach the limit for its mass, collapse into a black hole, and if there's more material in the vicinity, it will then acquire a little bit more mass again. But that's of course just a very basic explanation for how this could happen. At the moment, nobody knows. And so quite a few of these detections seem to be very unusual and somewhat difficult to explain. The smallest ones, the three smallest ones, and also the two biggest ones being of particular interest. And then on top of this, the collisions between a black hole and a neutron star are interesting for another reason. The scientists are also hoping to see some kind of a light coming from these regions, specifically the emissions in, for example, X-rays, gamma rays, and so on, that should result from this type of collision. And that's because it will allow the scientists to potentially see what the neutron stars are actually made out of. When a black hole shreds a neutron star, for this very, very tiny microsecond, it should technically reveal its insights to the rest of the universe, which should allow us to understand what they're made out of and what sort of a composition they actually contain. At the moment, our understanding of neutron stars is extremely theoretical, so there are quite a lot of mysteries about what's happening inside of them. And so definitely quite a lot of questions to answer. But what all of this shows us is that our ability to detect these events has improved so dramatically. And so next year, when the next results come out, chances are the scientists might have hundreds of different events to work with, helping us discover the variety of different objects we didn't even know existed until now. But this particular detection did finally help us solve a few mysteries. First of all, the mystery of the missing intermediate black holes. They definitely seem to be out there, and they seem to be growing in size with every collision. With the other major discovery being the fact that black holes seem to vary quite a lot in terms of mass, with some of them being quite dramatically different from one another. And then there are also some major unanswered questions. For example, why do we have so many large black holes that seem to defy explanation? Also, where exactly are these collisions happening, and why are there so many of them happening all the time? 
And so if this is happening in, for example, a center of a galaxy, this needs to have some sort of clarification in the future. But if this is coming from, for example, some sort of a global cluster that has a lot of black holes in the vicinity, so in other words, what the scientists are hoping to discover now is a gravitational wave event followed by a very specific supernova in a very specific part of the galaxy where we can actually identify where it's coming from. But anyway, check out all of the relevant links including the study in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.